Hi, and welcome to the Guitar Practice Perfectly Film Day. I suppose you call it a film day. I'm delighted to have here in our studio a very good friend of mine, a great guitar player, Mr. Stuart Ryan. Good to be here, thank you for the invite. Stuart, it's a pleasure, mate. I can't remember how many years we go back, but um, I remember that uh, I was very flattered actually, you used to attend a few of my concerts. And um, I have a memory as well, you actually came to my house, not for a guitar lesson, but uh, to chat to me about composition, which, um, which goes to show the kind of dedication you had, even then, to your craft, and I, was, I felt very honoured. And in some ways, quite embarrassed, I took your fee. But there you go, because here we are all these years on, and you're one of this country's most respected guitar players, and indeed, uh, teachers. But listen, can we go back in time? Tell us a little bit about your history, how it all started, how old you were when you got your first guitar, all that good stuff. Sure, gosh, well, I'm, I'm 35 now, so I've been playing guitar for 18 months, I think it is now. I actually, <laughs> I actually started... Yeah, I use that line sometimes, <laughs> it doesn't work. I started playing guitar when um, I was about 12, going on 13. And I don't come from a musical family. Um, it's not like I have you know, a brother who's playing violin and a sister on piano. I don't have any brothers or sisters. But I always loved music, and my parents always loved music. So my early memories of being in the car with rock and roll, really. You know, I grew up in rock and roll, Chuck Berry, um, Jerry Lewis, all that sort of stuff. And I remember hearing things like the, the intro to Johnny Be Good, intro to Great Balls of Fire, and thinking, that's, you know, that's impressive. I don't understand it. I'd be about four or five. And I used to sing along with all the, all the instrumental sections. Yes. So my parents would have these three-hour car journeys with a five-year-old. And they'd go, da 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 So you were obviously musical anyway, it's in there. That love of music, that sound was always there. I had, I had a love of it. I remember finding um, Jerry Lee Lewis's version of Johnny Be Good, which my parents had on vinyl. I remember putting it on the record player. I was probably about six. And I played the intro 25 times in a row, just lifting the arm, putting it back. You know, I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't know what a piano was, but I just remember thinking, this is great. So, I always, loved, I always loved music, and when I got to 11, 12, I think that's when parents start thinking, well, is it going to be football, is it going to be music, and you know, I didn't really make the school team that often, so that wasn't much of an option. I can relate to that. <laughs> I was always the one at the end, you know, who are you going to pick next, you know, the guy with the club foot, and then it would be me. <laughs> um, so, my parents uh, looked at my friends who were getting their first guitars. And they didn't say to me, would you like a guitar? Um, what happened is, is quite an interesting story. They looked at a friend of mine who had a, had a guitar. I think he had um, like a Squire Strat or something. And they thought, well, you know, it could be a nice idea to get him a guitar. And so they both independently went to the same shop in Liverpool on the same day. They went to a shop called Rushworth's. And without talking to each other, they both looked at a Hona classical guitar. And this is in the day before mobile phones, so they couldn't actually phone each other and say, this, this is what we're doing. And my dad bought the guitar, and my mum, my mum didn't. And when they both got home, my dad had this home classical, and my mum said, oh, that's strange, I, I was looking at one just like that today. And my dad said, whereabouts? And she said, in Rushworth, in, in Liverpool. And he said, well, that's where it came from. So they somehow bought the same guitar. Um, and so I remember coming home from school that day, my, my dad saying to me, I've got something for you, just you wait till you get home. And being 12, I thought it was computer games. I thought, brilliant, I'm going to look forward to this. Got home, put me in the living room, said, right, I'll be back in just a second. The excitement by this point was unbelievable. And then he walked in, not with Collins, but with, uh, with a 50 pound nylon string home, and I said, there you go. And I think my exact words were, what do I want that for? <laughs> it went in a cupboard for about six months. It didn't get touched. And then I think there's a combination of factors. My friends at school started to learn, you know, a few basic licks. And I started listening to music like um, Guns N' Roses, where the guitar was at the fore. And, you know, picked it up, somebody showed me that. And uh, we had a family friend who played a bit of surf guitar. So he was showing me all these, all these kind of oh, things. That's good, show me that. Just slow it down. Yeah, so it's <laughs> fantastic. And um, yeah, it took off from there. You know, you just, you, you're at the age where you've got the time in your hands. Can I just ask you, what was the, the, the first guitar player that really um, 
did it for you that you thought, hey, that's what I want to do, I want to play like that, or create that sound? Yeah, that's a tricky one. I think it was probably, it was probably Slash from Guns N' Roses, I think. Um, around that time, we were listening to Angus Young, Slash, Metallica, you know, the stuff that teenage boys in the late 80s, early 90s listened to. And for me, I think it was probably Slash. What was the thing that made the transition from the desire to play an electric guitar to the desire to play an acoustic? Very good question. Very good question. Um, I remember buying, I'd have been about 15 or 16, my parents bought me an Ovation acoustic guitar from somewhere in the Midlands, possibly Litchfield actually, seems to ring the bell. Um, and it was a grey sunburst which is probably the least sexy looking guitar you can possibly imagine. But I think it probably tied in with my image at the time. You know, my image at the time was probably quite, quite grey with a black Megadeth t-shirt and all this sort of stuff. Yeah, if I remember right, Ovations, even, even today, I've still got that kind of rock and roll connection. A lot of, the, a lot of those bands would play in Ovation. Um, dare I say it, I, I probably sold more Ovation guitars for the company in the, in the late 70s than anybody else here in the UK because it was the only guitar that had a pickup that you could actually play at volume uh, without any noticeable feedback. And it's, it kind of sounded like an acoustic. Looking back now, it sounded just like a box with rubber bands on it. But, you know, things have moved on. Yeah, this is true. I mean, I had that. I think I had like a fiberglass body as well. But I, I love that guitar. Because it had a bowl back, it would always do this as well. So, you know, it wouldn't ever sit. But that's how I went to acoustic guitar. Now, that wasn't finger style. That was... Um, I think that's more sort of playing the acoustic guitar parts from the, from the pieces I was learning. Um, and I started experimenting with classical guitar just because, and that's sort of how I got to fingerstyle, I had an abysmal fingerstyle technique. I used to use, you know, I think I just used my finger on my thumb and didn't really think about using these other fingers, you know, for doing those sort of rolling patterns. It sounds like me, I've never used <laughs> the other fingers. But it works fantastically for <laughs> what you do. Um, and so I got into the sound of the acoustic guitar from there. Mm. Um, but it wasn't until much later that I started seeing the acoustic guitar as a solo instrument. I think what happened, um, when I got to about 19 or 20, I started thinking, well, how can I actually play solo? And I think I said earlier, I remember there was one month, a while after that, when I saw you, Tommy Manuel, and Martin Taylor in pretty much the same month, and suddenly it was a revelation of what solo guitar playing could be. So I look at my acoustic guitar playing in, in two phases. I see the phase where I was just strumming, and playing lead guitar and acoustic, and then the sort of the proper finger style, and I saw you guys, and all of a sudden it made sense, the composition angle made sense, the performance started to take shape, and it all kind of stemmed from what you three were doing. Stuart, you must have uh, developed pretty quickly because uh, that only seemed like last week when I saw you attending my gigs, but that's an age thing. Um, we've only got a few more minutes before we run out of uh, tape, so um, did you ever go for lessons? I had a handful of lessons, um, I had a handful of lessons at school. Um, they ended when I asked the guy to explain what Eddie Van Halen was doing, and poor guy was a classical teacher, great classical player, but he had no idea mm. what Van Halen was all about. And then a couple of lessons when I was at university with a, with, um, a, a classical guitar teacher again, which was you know, interesting, um, learning a few things. I corrected a few finger style issues there, but only a handful, the rest of it, I just love the instrument. So pretty much like me and most of the players that I admire, we're all pretty much self-taught. Now listen, we're going to look forward very much to hearing you play solo later on, Stu, and I've got loads of questions, questions I want to ask you about your technique, but uh, thanks for coming, and it's great to have you here today at GPP Studios.